2d6 dungeon is making the rounds on youtube a lot of the bigger channels are doing reviews of the product the game caught my attention and in this video i'm going to show you how i printed and bound my version of the pdf together so let's get into this welcome to solitary rpg 2d6 dungeon is getting a lot of attention on youtube and rob over at rob's tabletop world did a great uh, little overview of the game and really gave some great insight that this is a game somewhere between four against darkness and d100 dungeon uh, toby lancaster did a great job of making an awesome roll and write kind of dungeon dive game but one of the things I noticed on some of the reviews is the tables codex just wasn't working for me. I don't know what was happening, if it was just what I was seeing on my TV screen, but something about these tables was bugging me. I don't know if it was the yellow color or all the bold lines used for the tables. And some of these tables have really small print and i don't know it just wasn't working for me but i wanted to take a look at the product line so i went over to the website for 2d6 dungeon i'll put a link in the description below uh, it was 14.99 pounds to be shipped over from the uk add in the exchange rate and shipping it was going to be well over 20 dollars and I, I just kind of was like, eh, I don't think I'm going to pick it up because I, I just wasn't sold on the the tables codex. And it's an important part of the game. And then I went over to Drive Through RPG. I saw the PDF was $8, so I picked up the PDF. And I'm so thankful I did. The way I approached this game is I wanted to figure out is what I was seeing on the screen, just my TV or was it just me? And it turns out it was me. Um, it just wasn't working for me. The, the color wasn't working and the size of everything wasn't working. So the first thing I was able to do with the PDF is I was able to increase my printing size so that these tables that have this small print are a lot easier for me to read. And everything is printed at 110%, the rule book and the tables codex. And the way I did that is first I just put it on my screen at 100% and took a look at it. So looked for any of the pages that might have been hard for me to read on my computer. Found a couple and then I printed those out. Because sometimes on screen and print are two different things. So I printed out some of those pages at 100%. And yeah, I just wasn't able to read them as easily. I had to put my glasses on, things like that. So then I just started upscaling the print. And I went to 110, 120, and 130 just to see which percentage would give me the smallest book, keeping with the original size of the book, yet making the game easier for me to read. And turns out 110% was it. So also reviewing the PDF on my computer, I kind of saw some layout designs that made me scratch my head a little bit and because I was printing out my own PDFs and binding my books together allowed me to make some of those some changes to the layout and we'll start with the rule book. So first the way this book is bound together when I print out a hundred and ten percent the image or the pages are in the center of the paper so there's like a thick white border going all the way around and when I cut the spine side, I cut a extra quarter inch of white paper just left on the side here. Then I staple this together and I wrap cardstock around the edge here with, and it's all glued down. So this gives this book a mechanical binding, which are the staples, and also a glue binding because the cardstock is wrapped around. I've done other videos talking about this simple binding technique, and this is becoming my preferred method for binding. I can bind a book like this super easily, and I have the flexibility because of the way I'm printing my books out on PDF 
to make the pages any size I want. I know some people like to do the zine style where you fold the paper in half and staple in the middle, which is great. Um, but I just think this gives me a little bit more flexibility to customize the, the book uh, and add to it and subtract from it. And that's what I ended up doing with 2D6 Dungeon. This is just a rule book. And towards the back of this rule book, there were a lot of pages that I didn't want in the rule book. I just wanted the rules. So I was able to take all of those pages out. They were the God cards, the herbal cards. There were some tables and some flow charts. All of the pages with the dot journal pages. I, I didn't even print them. I left them out. I left the character sheet out because I don't need a character sheet in the rule book. I've got the PDF. So whenever I want to play the game, I can just print out the character sheet. So I was able to leave pages out. And I took the pages that I wanted to keep and I added them to the tables codex where for me it just made more sense to keep any of the tables, charts, and cards in one place and just keeping the rules in the core rule book. So that's the first thing I did there for the tables codex. I did the same thing with leaving extra material on the spine side. I did a half inch on this book because I wasn't sure how much material the spiral binding would be taking into the book. A lot of times when you spiral bind books, uh, if you go right along the material, depending on how, you, how the book was designed, you may end up getting into the gutter. But this book is actually designed quite nicely to where you could, I could have cut right along the image, still spiral bound it, and it would have been fine. If I was to do this again, I would probably still just do a quarter inch like I did here so that both the books were the same size. And that's just what I would do. Spiral binding is not something I typically do because I do not have the equipment to punch this out and put the spiral binding in. So I end up taking it to the office store. It doesn't cost much to have it done. I think it was $5 to have this um, spiral bound for me. I know there are some home devices you can pur purchase, but I really like just the way they do it at the office store, and this just works for me. I think this is the kind of a book, though, that you would want to spiral bind because your all your pages or all your tables are in a landscape format, and you're going to be referring to a lot of these, so this just allows you so much flexibility to use this book let's start with the printing so we already know i'm printing at 110 percent but i'm also using 28 pound paper and the reason for that is this is a book that's going to get used and you're going to be flipping pages and you want a better quality paper especially for the spiral binding nothing worse than using 20 pound paper and you start getting damage along here and your pages start getting ripped out. I upgrade the quality of the paper. This is 28 pound paper. This is the thickest paper I can buy at the office store before going into cardstock. It does make my book a lot thicker, but it's gonna make it last a lot longer. So it's worth it. And then I was also able to reorganize some of this book. So first thing I did is I added a piece of actual cardstock right here and this is to separate the bestiary from the tables so i added that in and it's just because it makes for a quick reference point in the book so if i need to go to that this is like 100 pound cardstock so it's like a piece of cardboard and it just makes a good divider one of the benefits of binding your own books is you can do things like this. You can add in extra pages and dividers between sections. But yeah, with the cardstock, this is where I put the God cards in. From, so this is from the core rule book. This is from the core rule book. This is from the core. So all of this is from the core rule book. So I was able to just put all these pages in here. And then I get into the bestiary which is all here and all the cards uh 
I know Rob mentioned you should buy the cards. I'm okay with this. I think this is going to work out fine. If I really get into the game, maybe then I'll go out and buy the cards. But for just my first couple of games, I think I'll do this. And I could just print these out if I wanted to. And I'm going to have that same challenge with these cards. I will have to print them out at 100% and see if they work for me. Because I have that same yellow color. Actually, I have a couple different colors. And we have that same like big black bold lining for all the tables. And I don't know what is more distracting to my eyesight. Um, I think it's those black bold lines really just kind of throw me off. One of the other things is this book at the beginning of it doesn't have a table of contents. At the beginning of each colored section, you're going to get like this generic table of contents for what's in the yellow section. And then as you go through the different sections, you will get different tables. But at the very beginning of the book, you have no table of contents. But in the back of the book, you have an index. You have a very detailed index for all of the different tables. So what I did is I moved it to the front of the book to be, make it my table of contents and that's where it's at so pages 139 to 144 i took out of the back of the book put them towards the front of the book in a location that makes sense to me and that's basically how i put this book together so that is how i approached printing and binding to d6 dungeon I did my easy to bind design for the rule book because this is probably something I'll refer to quite a bit if I start playing the game, but as I play it, I'll stop referring to it as much because the rules are pretty straightforward. The tables codex, I did a spiral bind and that just made sense. Uh, normally I don't like a spiral bound book. But for this one, it's going to work out much better for the table space and the gameplay. And then I reorganized everything to make sense for me. So that's one of the benefits of buying PDFs and printing out your own books is you can make changes to it. You can do a very simple binding. Not everything has to be signatures and you don't need to have a hardcover. You can do different things for your binding. This is just my simple and easy method for binding, which is becoming more of my preferred method because uh, I can crank these out all day long. They don't take up much space. This is thinner than even a zine style fold in half because when you fold um, some of those in half, the books have a tendency to puff out in the center and they sometimes look a little weird on your, t on your shelf. This makes a nice thin spine that I can slip on my shelf. I added my own little protective cover to it. So just good stuff. That's why I like this. I normally don't like spiral binding books. Uh, a lot of times spiral binding books, if you cut along the image, you end up getting the spiral binding into the gutter and you reduce the size of the gutter. Printing my own out, leaving that extra material on the side for the spiral binding. Uh, this way I don't affect the text, but this particular book is designed in such a way you could cut along the image, still spiral bound because there's lots of space here for everything. So Toby did a great job with that design feature, um, but then I reorganized some of it. Uh, there was just some things I didn't want in the main rule book, which were the God cards and some of those tables. Put those in here and then added this nice little divider page which is something you can do when you're binding your own books is you can put in extra pages. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I like binding my own books because I can add those extra pages. I can actually take rules from one game system and put them in a rule book for another game system that I'm playing. So that way I'm, I'm kind of blending my own, making my own book out of multiple books and adding all the rules from games that I enjoy into one book. So good stuff. And it's just a fun little hobby on the side. Uh, doing this was just a, it was a good couple hour project of looking everything over, printing it all out and just having a good time with it. So thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye.